What is the undisputed worst thing about shields? I ask this rhetorically because everybody knows the answer is they're not weapons. Who wants to carry two weapons? Everyone. How are you gonna do that when one of your hands is all hogged up by some dumb shield? Ooh, they, they protect your body from harm. Ooh, they will protect you from dying. They make you harder to kill. Ooh. Who needs it? <laughs> no, I'm being serious. This isn't a joke right now. I'm not, I'm not joking. How do we cure this problem that has plagued mankind since, well, not anytime recently, but maybe sometime a long time ago, but that uh, I'm making into an issue right now. Hmm, I don't know. How about a shield designed with the express purpose of punching people's heads off? Or alternatively, poking people's heads off. You trying to get your head poked off? Didn't think so. I'm, jo I'm, I'm joking about the shield thing, by the way. In actuality, I did make this thing because I've been doing a lot of weapon training recently and I've actually kind of taken to shield bashing. Mostly because you can reasonably have a shield that weighs way more than you could reasonably have a weapon. And if you're in a fight or training with an item that has that much weight behind it and you're able to get a good throw behind it, you can put so much more energy into the target than you can with even something like a club, one of the heaviest weapons you're gonna use. Here, check it out, check it out. What you're gonna be looking for here is how much the bag is moving. Now watch this. As hard as I can swing with this bat. Yeah, the other way. It's really only swinging about five or six inches in whatever direction I'm swinging the bat. Now check this out. This is with my left hand too and I'm right handed. You notice a bit of a difference. Really just what it comes down to is this is a lot heavier. All the force you're gonna get out of this is from the speed. You can't exactly swing and then push your way through the target like you can with shield bashes or punches. Now, what I think would be ideal would be to pair this with a really light weapon. So the really light weapon would essentially function as a jab. Because it's really fast, you would use it as a distraction. And then when they least expect it, you go in for the finisher. Go. To be completely honest though, even though this is really light, <laughs> when I first got it, I was practicing on the bag with it, and somehow I managed to bounce it back. And the edge right here just clocked me right on the edge of my eyebrow ridge. And just like the abruptness, the sharpness of it, hearing that crack on your skull, it's very discouraging, I'll say that. I think if you were to take full swing on somebody's head with this. I don't know, I really, I really do think that this would do well to end a fight on its own. But if it doesn't work out, you can always go with the heavy hitter. In case you're wondering, this is one of those uh, cold steel training tomahawks. And this is a cold steel Brooklyn basher. Wouldn't be a ZNA video if I wasn't sweaty, huh? Now I'm gonna show you guys how to make it, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. Alrighty, famalams. Today we're going to start out with a polypropylene buckler from cold steel. Let me clear something up real quick, because there was an unreasonable amount of people on the last video who apparently thought that I was like, trying to deceive you into thinking I was using materials that I actually wasn't, which why would I ever do that? When I say, all right guys, today we're using a cold steel polypropylene baseball bat, or okay guys, today we're using a cold steel polypropylene buckler. What I'm not doing is going, all right guys, today we're gonna use a <laughs> steel buckler. <laughs> They're never gonna know. Oh wow, that, that that's pretty cold. Hmm. Cold steel buckler. And then just like saying polypropylene for fun, which actually I don't blame you if you're gonna say any word for fun. It's probably polypropylene. Probably polypropylene. Probably polypropylene. Probably polypropylene. Probably poly. As spit gathers on this buckler. Anyways, we're going to kind of misuse this buckler. What's it made out of? Oh, probably polypropylene. And whereas this would be the boss, I guess, and then this would be the shield, we're actually gonna use the whole entire thing as a shield boss. And I'm also gonna try to repurpose this handle for use as a handle. Oh look, some nuts. <laughs> Better take those out. Ugh, ooh, what's this? A new socket set. Mmm. Oh, so shiny. Where the heck did I get the money for this? Oh yeah, patreon.com forward slash CNA production. Wait. I still gotta do this. Alright, find the right size. Ooh, jackpot. <gasps> Oh, that's so nice. This one actually has a button on the back to release the to release the socket. The other one that I had, you basically had to hold it on with your fingers as you were like ratcheting. Oh my gosh, thank you guys so much. No joke, actual thank you so much. All right, Leptilucci. <laughs> Dang, I was hoping that was just gonna pop off. <laughs> I just tried to sit in a chair and put my feet right here and pull on it like this and I almost passed out. Woo! 
It seems like I have to unscrew these, but obviously these are a uh, carriage bolt, so there's nothing to do. I think I'm gonna cut a little thing in there so I can unscrew it with a screwdriver. So these things are curved right here. That can make this a little interesting, but this looks like it's gonna work out just perfect. This thing's about to get extra thick and I'm talking with two C's. This is some three quarter inch oak plywood. If this thing was going to be any sort of big at all, I would not suggest doing this. It would be way too heavy, but this thing's actually gonna be pretty small. And being that the shield boss is made of polypropylene instead of steel, I think we can afford the weight. All right, I'm marking 16 inches here. And I'm marking 16 inches here. Lay down a straight edge. All right, so this is 22 and three quarters. Half of that is 11 and three eighths. 11, one, two, three. Take a tiny nail, and if you got it, a tiny hammer. Not because it's necessary, just because it's kind of cute. Tie some string around the nail. Tie it around the Sharpie. And now draw yourself an oddly satisfying circle. Pull that out. And now here's where stuff gets weird. I'm gonna do four inches this way, four inches this way, and then just put the edge of my ruler against this dot and push it until it touches the circle. Now I draw this line, and then same on this side if you can believe it. Oh, dang it. I already ruined my belated semi-annual New Year's resolution. I'm gonna tell you guys about it right now so you can keep me true. From now on, I really, really want to keep on checking the screen to make sure I'm pointing it at what I'm supposed to be pointing it at. And also, I'm gonna try not to do that thing where I'm like getting in front of the camera, doing all this stuff. Oh man, that bugs me when I'm editing. But all right, we got this. Now I'm gonna cut this out with uh, probably a jigsaw. Okay, now the width of the grip on the handle is about five and a quarter inches. I've got this hole saw right here that's five inches across. I think that should be good enough. So I'm gonna start the hole right here, right at the center. <laughs> Probably need a bigger drill. <laughs> Remember this guy? Me and this guy go way back. In fact, I don't think I've used this drill since the last time I used it for this hole saw. It was always a little scary for me to use because it's so powerful. And here we go. This thing is so scary, dude. Ugh, dang it. I tried to stop before that happened. Yeah, try to stop before uh, this stuff starts happening, before you make it all the way through, and flip it over and come at it from the other side. It'll just make sure that this is a lot cleaner. Can I go a little slower with this? It's like too spooky. Oh. <sighs> It looks like a giant pin. Now I beveled the inside edge of this here to make it more comfy on your wrist, and I traced out the outside of the handle. And now just to keep everything in place while I'm drilling and stuff, really not for any sort of structural integrity at all, I'm mixing up some epoxy, and I'm going to fix the handle down. I'll just give that a minute. So obviously this is the sturdiest thing ever, but now that I got it here and I've been able to throw a couple of punches with it, I'm realizing that I do want a little extra wrist room. Luckily, since we're using a buckler as a boss, it affords us quite a bit of extra room. Ah, 
I think I gotta take the handle off. Yeah, especially if I'm gonna do the router. Dang it. Now I'll route this out now too. Yeah, that's way better. Okay, now I know that I want to line the front edge with some angle steel. That's gonna be pretty tough to do if this is a round edge because then I have to cut this right here. I have to cut triangles into it over and over and over and over so I can bend it and curl it around the front here. So instead, I'm gonna cut the front of it into flat sides. So then I only have to make a bend wherever the corners are. Now I am gonna paint this thing, but I wanna get any alterations out of the way first uh, so that any drilling or whatever doesn't have to mess up the paint. fitting the steel to the edge of the shield. Transfer the line to the other side as well. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm gonna make this reinforcement bracket out of some more plywood. Trace it out.
All right, let's put it together. Oh, it's still a little bit sticky. We're gonna make it work though. All right, here's the one I'm scared of because it might split the wood. Cool. All right, that should be sturdy as a mother hecker. Snap. Ooh, it's looking mean already. So here we go. Now a couple final finishing touches. We got this squishy foam pad and another one of these belts. Everybody seems to think I'm spending all my money on watermelons and pumpkins and sheet metal. No, it's belts. These things are like 10 bucks each, man. It's killing me, Smalls. Anyways, eyeball this. And I'm marking just inside the square so that the lines don't show up once I put the pad down. Using some of that good, good contact cement. The heck is this? Is this a paddle? The other one had a brush. Come on, Menards, you're letting me down. All I had is this giant paintbrush. Let it sit 15 minutes, then just go for it. It's an instant bond, so you don't really get a second chance. Be careful, you should be good. And I'm gonna do this screw by hand because I want as little stripping as possible. All right, that should be about it. All right guys, so that's the build. I wanted to sincerely thank you guys for how helpful you've been throughout this weird ad revenue drought. It seems like every single time I'm like just getting to that point where I'm like, how am I gonna pay for uh, my truck payment? How am I gonna pay rent? How am I gonna pay my utility bill? Then I just go and I like hop on Teespring and I'm like, that's how. That is so helpful, guys, I'm serious. Also, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I got my first payment from uh, Patreon. That was a little over $300, which is fantastic. It might not seem like it, but even a goofy little build like this costs about $100 and it adds up. So don't ever think that if you're buying a hoodie or a t-shirt that I don't notice it. it is, it's so helpful, guys. If you wanna support the channel and help me make videos more often or of better quality, uh, go ahead and visit teespring.com forward slash alpha dash Z or Patreon dot com forward slash ZNA Productions. But that's about all I got for today. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.